All right, guys, as I continue to struggle with this lighting in the background, we're going to be talking about a few, get this thing turned around, a few survival, uh, a few survival oriented fire starting ideas from my PSK. So I'm literally pulling these out of the PSK. I do realize I could have just thrown them in there a couple minutes before, but I didn't. They exist in here. And some of people who are already familiar with the PSK will know most of these. But if I remember correctly, I actually snuck another fire starter in here after doing my videos. And if I just do one modification or update to this, I'm not going to do a whole video breaking everything else down because there is a lot jam packed in here. So let's talk about a few of these survival fire starters and why I carry them in here. Without any further ado, guys, too, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Instagram, the Patreon. You know the drill. The, appreciate, the support is heavily appreciated. You guys are awesome. Okay, let's talk about it. Okay, so I'm going to have to rummage through this thing just a little bit here, uh, but... Once again, this also won't be an entirely brand new concept for some people who are already kind of familiar with the PSK from my channel. But unlike in other videos, I'm not gonna be going over the whole kit today, just the specific fire starters. So one thing I will say, the only update that I have made to this as I've pulled out some of the stuff is that for fire starters, I did add some UST matches. They are the kind of uh, matches, I'm trying to remember their technical name, I'll probably annotate it, but they're basically these Titan survival matches. I think that's actually their name, is Titan survival matches. Now, unfortunately, they do kind of, because this kit is so condensed and so tight, unfortunately, these Titan survival matches do get broken, at least some of them. So let me double check here. I don't think all of them are broken, but I do know, and I can already see that at least one one of them is broken. So I think luckily, I think though I'm not gonna pull them out, I think just this top one is broken. I'm not sure if you guys will be able to see that, but right about here, it is broken. That is something that I do know happens to these matches um, in this kit, because like I said this kit is under a lot of pressure because there is a ton of stuff in it. It is jam packed. And that's also why I don't like to take it apart very often because it is a royal pain in the butt to put everything back. So anyways, the first thing we're gonna talk about, like I said, is the newest edition, and that is the UST Titan survival matches. Now, aside from this top one being broken, most of them are intact. And these guys, the reason why I wanted to include them is they serve a function of not only being a fire starter, but also kind of a tinder. These guys burn for a long time. And I don't exactly remember the full time frame that they burn, but it is a few minutes. And of course, with these Titan matches, you do need a specific striker and that striker as you guys can see is just tucked back here so this is a really interesting way and if I had a larger or if I could carry a larger um, match box or like ma match container I would definitely recommend putting these guys in a match container because the biggest problem with matches even as big and as thick as these as you guys can clearly see they can break and of course if you have a match break it's not only harder to use but it is also less effective now for me I'm not really that worried about this match being broken because like I said these tight matches are so big you could just as easily strike it while holding on to this broken part as you could holding it all the way back. These things are absolutely massive. And to give you guys some point of reference, this is what a more typical standard match that I carry in my match kit or match box actually looks like, if I can get one out. So this is what like a typical standard match looks like versus the size of one of these Titans. So you can see there is a huge difference between the size of a Titan match and a standard match. So that is the biggest reason why uh, I'm not too concerned about them being broken. They are absolutely massive. Now, other ideas that I have for fire starting will roll naturally into this matchbox. Now, I already went over the waterproof matches that are in here. They're just general, generic, waterproof matches. Nothing too crazy or wild about them. I may upgrade them at some point to UST matches, but there's not a whole lot of reason because the biggest thing that I like about these small waterproof matches is the fact that even though they're not the most amazing or spectacular, especially when I do have amazing, spectacular matches, the thing I like about these is that you can carry something like 40 or 50 of these matches in one match container. And by and large, most of the time, 
your survival situations are not going to need the most extreme, the most crazy matches ever designed. And the biggest downside is that with matches, each one of these is at most one fire. Sometimes it might even take two or three matches, probably not these guys, to start a fire. So when I talk about matches, I usually go with quantity over quality because a lot of your UST specialized matches are so big, so overbuilt that you might only be able to carry, you know, 10 of those matches in here. So if I can fit 50 of these matches that aren't as high quality, yes, I may go through a few matches, but I usually have more matches to spare in this type of environment. So if say I had to start a fire with a match right now, these are going to be totally adequate, just fine. And I also have a lot of them. Now, once again, that's part of the reason why I carry a little bit more extreme matches, because if it is a heavy downpour and absolutely crazy, then I'm definitely going to rotate over to something that's more heavy duty. Other things to keep in mind is I like to carry things like um, a little bit of steel wool. Now, a little bit of steel wool can be used in non-traditional ways. Say I have my, you know, um, say I have, you know, my uh, GPS right here. If for no other reason I can't use any of these other fire starters, having just a little bit of steel wool not only acts as a barrier and a cushion for your matches, but you can also take it and use batteries that you might have in something like a GPS to start fires that way. So it's kind of a dual redundancy that some people choose cotton batting for this. I personally like using steel wool because it gives me an entirely different way to start fires, once again, using things like electricity. So that's how I run my matches. Other survival fire starting ideas is I like, and I'm not a huge, overly huge fan of these little live fires, but I do keep a live fire in here because I like these, the idea of live fires because they are kind of a tinder that's also reusable. So of course, these are designed to be roughed up. They're kind of like a wax impregnated cotton in there. So you can rough them up, start your fire or start a fire here, start a fire, you know, in your tinder bundle, close this up, and you can reuse this, you know, dozens of times. And so I do like these, these are pretty cool. And the nice thing about live fires, while once again, they are not my favorite product, what I do like is that they are super thin, super easy to carry, and just overall really good. Not to mention if you do ever truly run out of your live fire, if you do burn this all, you can repurpose this tin into making um, char cloth. This, because this is perfectly, this is a perfectly fine tin cloth or tin uh, little can. So it can't make a lot of char cloth, but you can make char cloth with these if you need to. Okay, the last couple are going to be pretty easy and pretty straightforward for fire starting ideas. Of course, pair, or of course, ferro rods are super important, super useful. I love ferro rods. You'll notice that I have them on a plethora of my different knives as such, you know, um, I just carry a lot of ferro rods in general, but of course my PSK does have a dedicated ferro rod in and of itself too. Ferro rods are one of those survival fire starters that you really should practice, get familiar with, understand how they work. But if you do those things and you practice with them on a semi-regular basis, they are very hard to beat for fire starting, especially like I've mentioned uh, in cold conditions, because a lot of things like your lighters require the aerosol aerosolization or the gas to become an aerosol for them to burn. Obviously your lighters don't burn just straight fuel. Even if there was fuel on the ground, you know, and you throw sparks on it, the raw liquid fuel isn't going to burn. It's what's becoming aerosolized now. So when that, so when liquids like gasoline hit certain temperatures, certain cold temperatures, they can no longer effectively aerosolize. And therefore, especially things like your butane, uh, really just kind of gel up and become completely unusable. So while I do love lighters, ferro rods do not have that issue. They require friction that comes from naturally striking it to essentially ignite uh, or become a thermo thermogenic ignition. Um, so anyways, not to get too scientific here, that's why I like ferro rods. They're really great. They're very effective in a wide plethora of environments and weather conditions. Of course, though, nothing really beats a 
lighter for the vast majority of the time because most people aren't going to be going out and trying to do survival situations or find themselves in a survival situation at negative 50. Something like a little peanut lighter is one of my favorite survival lighters or setups to have in general for fire because these little peanut lighters, this one is from Meritac or Countycom, however you want to call it, and uh, this little guy is a sealed unit. It does use O-rings so it retains its fuel. It doesn't run out like a Zippo. And these guys are really useful. You can pretty much always count on them within reason. Obviously there's not going to be, water will not get into this and it's a sealed system. So very effective setup. This one, like I said, is just a little peanut lighter from County Com, but you can get these in a number of, from a number of different vendors and variants. I always recommend if it's going to be in a survival kit, try to get it in the largest reasonable capacity. This one is their peanut lighter XL, which I believe it's an aluminum XL peanut lighter uh, from County Com. And this one's my favorite because not only is it a reasonably sized lighter, but it also is still small small enough and most importantly a nice shape to fit in a survival uh, kit like my PSK without really causing uh, any interference. So that is what I carry as far as a lighter goes and I heavily recommend being hyper redundant. As you guys can see here there's many different types of tinders and fire starters that I use. In addition to that too I'm not going to dig them out of here but I also have UST wet fire and um, tinder quick in here and once again i use wet fire similarly to how i would use these matches i use wet fire if it's a serious situation that requires a you know if it's a very wet environment and i need that extra water proofing uh, or water durability i will switch over to the wet fire but by and large the reason why i carry the tinder quicks is for most survival situations if it's not wet and i just need to start a fire I can get away with a tinder quick. So that is kind of my idea. I try to balance out so I'm not just using the best of my best, uh, similar to my matches. I don't always want to be using my Titan matches, like the best of the best matches, especially because even though I am carrying six, this is still only six matches, whereas there's like 40 matches in here. So that's the kind of balance, you know. You can start potentially 40 fires here. You can start potentially six fires here. So anyways, that's uh, kind of my reasoning behind that. You don't always want the highest quality fire starters. Sometimes quantity is better than quality. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video and this breakdown of survival fire starters. Fire is basically one of the highest level or most key points to survival, especially in cold or damp or wet environments. So making sure that you have this system hyper redundant is very important to me and should be important to you guys. Anyways, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.